Pedro from EMP Reacts. I'm here today with Nameless from Ghost Bath to talk about the latest record, Self Loader, out October 29th on Nuclear Blast. How's it going? Pretty good. I just woke up. It's about 5.30 p.m. Uh, I got my cup of coffee and uh, I'm feeling good. You're ready to rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get right into it. This record represents the end of a trilogy. Now, did this album start to take shape for you at the beginning of that journey or you took each album individually? Um, so at the beginning, when I planned the trilogy, the only thing that I had in mind was um, just the basic elements and the uh, the direction I was going to go with each album. And so I had, you know, the uh, the tragedy, ecstasy and dread slash doom that I had in mind. And I knew, um, you know, Moon Lover would be the uh, saddest um, Star Mortar would kind of have that joyful sound um, for ecstasy. And then um, this one would be like the heaviest and darkest. But other than that, um, that's the only thing I had planned. And then I took each album individually after that. So I never had, you know, any riffs, any titles of songs, anything like that until it was time to write this specific album. Uh, how, how is that uh, process for you? How is the creative process for you when, when you have a trilogy and, and, and flow and, and you still have to create an album that ties into that trilogy, but then it still has to represent its own self? Um, I think it's just, I, I left it open enough to where I could, um, you know, experiment and go in the direction I needed. Um, it was just every, every album still explores, um, you know, sadness and depression. Um, it's, they're all three, you know, depressive, suicidal, black metal albums to me. And it's just the lens that I'm looking through to explore that, that changes. And so I think um, that helps. And then also, you know, just having my voice in, in each album um, allowed them all to, you know, still sound like Ghost Bath. Is, is it these records a little bit uh, also of a way of you diving deeper, perhaps into a side of yourself that that you want to keep in the dark? Um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's easier to do it this way than to talk about it, I guess, for me or, you know, to write about it or anything. I think it's just the most natural, um, the natural path for me to release these sort of, uh, you know, darker thoughts or mindsets. Um it's just uh, it's like converting that negative energy into something creative. It's called sublimation. And so, you know, if I'm feeling that type of way, I'll, I'll pick up my guitar and it, and it just comes out. And that's kind of when I write, that's my biggest um, catharsis is, you know, the writing process, just me and my guitar in my room and just um, working on riffs or whatever. So you, you said that the only thing that you had for these three records was the theme that each one of them was going to have. So when, when it came time to start putting this album together, outside of the theme that you already had, what is the next step for you? What is the next piece that starts that puzzle coming together? Um, so for me, it's always been, you know, a guitar riff. Um, I'm a guitarist first and foremost, even though, you know, on the previous albums, I've played all the instruments on it. Um, with this album in particular, is a little bit of a different process because the entire band um, worked on the album instead of just me. Um, so the first song for this album to kind of set the tone and the direction of the record um, sonically, we wrote the first song all together in the same room. And uh, that was Convince Me to Bleed. It was the first um, single that came out. And then we kind of all knew from that point, okay, this is kind of what we're going for. This is what we want to sound like. And so um, we have three different guitarists. And so basically each song would start with one of the three guitarists coming up with kind of the bass riff to, to go off of. And then everyone else would kind of give their input and build it off of that. Yeah. You, you mentioned that the, the, the albums have some connections in between them, the, this whole trilogy. When you take a step back and you look at all three as finished products now, what do you feel that unifies them as one? And what do you feel perhaps gives each one of them outside of the theme, it's most unique characteristic. Um. The thing that unifies them all as one is just that they all explore basic human emotions. Um, they all, they're all coming from different angles, but I think it's, there are different emotions that, you know, everyone can connect with, you know, um, everyone's felt, you know, tragedy, everyone's been ecstatic about something or excited or happy. And then, um, you know, everyone's felt that, that doom or dread or something, whether, you know, you're waiting for something inevitable that's going to happen that you're not looking forward to. And so I think that's sort of the, the unifying factor in what I was going for. Just um, basically that makes you feel things, reminds you of, you know, past experiences, stuff like that. Um, and then did you ask uh, what makes them all like individualistic or? Yeah. What gives them its own unique characteristic outside of the themes, obviously. 
Yeah, I think I just, you know, I took each one and I really focused on on that theme. And so, you know, with um, with like Moon Lover, um, the idea was it was going to be, you know, uh, purgatory at the same time as, you know, tragedy. And so it was, it was my first record and, and I wrote that one in like three days and it was sort of just my first experiment <laughs> into like writing a studio album. And then um, Star Mourner, I did, I just, I just took every element, you know, like the visual aspect was like super colorful. Um, the titles were all like celestial titles and it was about like angels and stuff. And it was, um, you know, I just really stuck to the themes and then uh, the songs were really long. It was like a 72 minute album um and all of that i just uh specifically chose to be like ecstasy and then um with this album um i think this is the most unique because it's the one that doesn't just have my voice so it's gonna have you know all five members putting in their input and um it's also the most different because you know i changed up my vocal style on it um we recorded with somebody different than every other album so yeah um this one ended up being you know the most different and it, it wasn't planned to be have all those elements different it's just you know I go with the flow and whatever feels right and whatever I think at the time is gonna make the best album and so yeah I think this one ended up being uh the most different and then I think the next one after that since we don't have the trilogy um anymore with like a direction it's just I, it can go in any direction really You've been talking about this album as the theme being dread and doom. When I was listening to the record, I also felt there was a lot of hate in there. Uh, is that an emotion that perhaps is packed in between those two? Yeah, definitely. Um, but it's so, sort of like, a, um, well, I guess with the title self low there, it makes it, it's yeah, a it's, hate directed at, you know, oneself and, oneself. and maybe, um, you know, shortcomings or failures of, you know, myself. And so that's definitely a, a theme in there. And that's something I wanted to portray. So I'm happy that came through. When you're putting this album together, do you look at the songs individually or do you look at the songs individually, but also thinking about the collective in terms of how they're going to work in the overall design of the record? Um, so as long as I have that, you know, the general, um, theme and atmosphere in mind, um, it comes kind of natural to me to be able to follow that when I'm writing each song, but at the time of writing the songs, it's usually, I'm just focusing on each individual song. Um, we didn't have, you know, the, the track list order, um, figured out beforehand or anything. We did that after the fact. So I'd say, yeah, we focused on each song individually and just made sure that it uh, fit with the themes. And actually, we wrote probably double the amount of songs that are on the record, and and we only used about half of them that that fit the best. And so, yeah, it was each individual song. Um, we made it the best we could, and then we selected from those, and then we put them in the order that made the most sense. As a listener, sometimes going through this record, I felt a little bit lost. And having said that, the way you guys created these songs with having really nice intros that lead you into the track and then having really nice outros that kind of exit you off the track, it, it kind of removed a little bit of that mist and allowing me, allowed me to see the path, the journey that the album had from beginning to end a little bit better. Was that something that you had in mind or happened more naturally? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. So I really like playing with contrast and I like, um, you know, on certain tracks, it'll end super pretty, let's say, you know, like a really nice piano piece or some violin or something like that. And then the next track, when it comes in, when it's really heavy, it's just that much heavier, it hits that much harder. Um, I like I do that sometimes within tracks too. But yeah. Um, and then at the same time, it's kind of a natural thing for me, I think it's just the way I write. Um, I'll just have, you know, uh, a really pretty intro or outro um, to lead and transition between the tracks and sort of try to make it flow as best as I can. You mentioned already that this is a heavy record. I think it's the heaviest of the trilogy for sure. Uh, was that heaviness on purpose, like by design, or do you feel like the topic itself of the album kind of pushes its way into being a much heavier sounding record? Um, again, it was a little bit of both because before I even we even wrote this record it was going to be the heaviest before we had even a single riff we knew 
that was the idea for it. And then um, using those themes, you know, we did everything we could to, to bring out, you know, hatred. If you're going to bring out hatred over, over ecstasy or tragedy, it's gonna, it's gonna sound heavier. And so, yeah, it was, it was a little bit of both. And um, I think at the same time, it was, it was bringing in the other guitar players to write riffs and um, you know, they, I think they write a little bit heavier um, type music than I do. My stuff tends to be, uh, more straightforward, more pretty. And so, you know, it became a mixture of that, but then, you know, their influence definitely helped uh, make the record the heaviest ghost bath record. The, the drums on this album, at least from my perspective, felt like the heartbeat of the record, sometimes beating faster, sometimes beating slower, depending on where you were taking me on a specific track. But I, I really felt like the drums had that heartbeat effect. Uh, would you define the sound of the drums as such as the heartbeat of the album? And if so, if the drums are the heartbeat, what's the soul? Um, man, I've, I've actually never thought of it that way. I think um, on this record, you know, I let each member um, decide what they wanted to play. And even though, you know, sometimes I would uh, program some drums to like show what I thought would fit in each part. But um, the rule was basically whoever's instrument it was would get the final say on what they play on the record. So, you know, if Jason, our drummer thought, you know, this type of beat or part should go here, he got the final say on it. Um, he's a really good drummer. And um, I always felt like, you know, the drums definitely need to help with the atmosphere and um, with black metal and a lot of blast beats and stuff like that, it's almost a hypnotic effect to me. And it's sort of like, lull, it should lull you into the song. Um, it shouldn't like stand out and be, you know, this crazy thing that you're like paying attention to. It should kind of be in the background and drive the song forward. So I guess it could kind of be a, a heartbeat in that way. And you're asking what what is the soul of, of the music if that's the heartbeat? Um, to me, I'd say it's the guitar because that's where, you know, where everything stems from in my book. And um, just the chord changes and the melodies that we do with the guitar are like, are, are definitely just the soul of the tracks and the soul of, of Ghost Bath in my opinion. Uh, where do your vocals come in in the big picture? I, I, like you mentioned already, there was a little bit of a difference coming into this album in terms of what you wanted to do. But how, how do you, where do you put them? And when you're making this puzzle, this this big picture from this puzzle that is this album, um, the vocals have been and are still just the last uh, and final piece that I do for any um, any track. And I kind of changed up my method this time um, with previous records. I would just do them all in one take in the studio without anything planned, without um, looking at anything, without lyrics. And I would just, uh, whatever felt right, I would just do in the studio. And with this one, I wanted to change that up. I, I felt like I'd done that enough. And um, I still do sort of the high pitched um, DSBM um, vocals, but then which is with the themes and moving forward as a band, I wanted to challenge myself and, and, with hatred, I, I felt like those, you know, wouldn't be enough. And I had to do some, you know, some lows and, and some really um, just heavier vocals. It just felt right. Um, and so, yeah, this time around, um, once all the tracks were finished, I had to practice a lot, warm up a lot and figure out how to how to do these types of vocals because I'd never done them before. And um, yeah, that's the last thing I did was uh, write the lyrics once all the tracks were done, which just involved me sitting down, listening to it and writing um, with the with the song playing in the background and then placing all the vocals where I wanted them. And it was a little bit more of a analytical process this time. I have to ask you about this song, a Sanguine Mask. Uh, my favorite track on the album, the first time I heard it, I had goosebumps. Every time I hear it, I still get goosebumps. Can you tell me a little bit of the background of that track, how that song came together? It's just a phenomenal track. Thank you. Um, that was one. So each track kind of has a primary guitar writer, um, just based on, you know, uh, whoever comes up with the, the initial risks and the initial ideas. And that was one that I, I had come up with. And that one, um, went through a lot of different iterations and I didn't exactly know, I didn't know how to, how to continue it after that first initial riff with the uh the chugs and the and the tremolo picking 
and then one day I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go in my mind, just something super different. And I went into, you know, just the guitars and then into that super slow, uh, methodical sort of chugging part next. And then, yeah, I don't know. Right. When I, when I showed that to the other guys, they're like, Oh yeah, this is it. Cause you know, initially I think it was going to be one of the tracks we cut until we like made that major change in it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I've always done, you know, sort of the, uh, I don't really see them as breakdowns. Um, I don't think they work as breakdowns, but they're kind of similar to a breakdown um, with the chugging part. And then um, I really, to me, my favorite part in that song is the the blast beats in the middle and the chord change because I love <laughs> making chord changes. And so like halfway through that, when the chords change from something kind of dark and dissonant into something uh, pretty right there and the blast beats still going, that's like actually one of my favorite parts on the record too. Uh, was I know you had more songs than the ones that made the record. So it, it, this question maybe doesn't apply because you just got rid of the ones that gave you problems. But was there a track that is on the record that that gave you a little bit of trouble to finalize to, to get it to the to where you needed it to be? Um, other than Sanguine, Sanguine Mask, which did. Um, let me think. I'm going to go through the tracks in my head. Um, probably um what's it called sinew and vein um that was the one that we wrote in the studio the only track that we wrote while in the studio the rest were all finished and demoed beforehand um that was interesting putting together the main problem for me was like trying to make it something that wasn't boring because we only had one riff going in um just like picking out a chord and we just had to take it from there and uh so that one was really a group effort everyone giving their input the whole time and we actually had to record the drums first for that with just you know a, a scratch guitar track and so that was yeah that was an interesting process but i think where it ended up was like a pretty unique sounding song like i don't think it sounds as much like the other songs on the record but i think um the i think on that one the vocals are what tied it together and made it more dsbm because without those vocals i think it would almost sound like post hardcore or some way like a way different genre yeah i agree with you 100 percent. one last question for you looking back now at the work that you put in into this album and, and how great this album sounds because i think this album is phenomenal top to bottom what do you see as the biggest strength of this record um man that's hard for me to say because I have a really tough time um, sort of looking at myself objectively and saying, you know, this part's good or bad. <laughs> it's just mostly for me, it's, you know, what I enjoy the most or not. And I think for me personally, I'm most proud of um, um, the vocals that I did. I think it took the most work for me to develop that. And I think it turned out really well. And I think, you know, it was kind of a surprise to fans because people who know who we are have never heard me do vocals in that style. And um, when you do something new, people don't really like change usually. And so I, I wanted to make sure it was done right. And I think um, most of the reactions um, of people who have shown it to you were like, oh, these, these vocals actually sound really good. And so that's probably my answer. Well, I got to tell you, the whole album is phenomenal. Vocals, everything. I, I've been telling everybody who hasn't pre-ordered yet, make sure they pre-order because... This album is just outstanding. What a way to put an end to the trilogy with this just phenomenal record all around. So uh, thank, you. thank you for the record and, and thank you for taking the time today to chat with me about the album. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Take care. You too.